In this video, we're going to talk about random variables and probability distributions. And first, we need to define what those are. Random variable, well, you've definitely heard the term variable before. A variable is an unknown. So when you're doing algebra and you're solving for x, you define x, that's your variable, as an unknown that you're trying to, solve, to, you're trying to define. A random variable is something a little bit different. A random variable is, uh, when you're talking about probability or sampling, it's defined as encompassing all the possible outcomes in a sample space. So for instance, we might define, we might say uh, we're, we're rolling a die. And our random variable is going to in include all of the possible outcomes for rolling that die. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you might also, you might say drawing a card. Forgive my bad handwriting. Drawing a card, you've got the ace of spades, queen of diamonds, three of clubs. Um, all the possible values of, of drawing, all the possible cards in the deck are going to uh, be your random variable. So the notation we use for a random variable is a capital letter. So we might say x is our random variable for rolling a die, y is our random variable for drawing a card, and then we use the lowercase values to define specific outcomes. So, our, so we might say x equals 1, x equals 2, etc., all the way up to x equals 6. Drawing a card, well, I'm not going to write down every single card in the deck, but you know our y here, our lowercase y, is going to be ace spades, king, Well, I should write y equals the king of spades, y equals queen of spades, etc. You see where I'm going with this. Now, there are two types of random variables. We have discrete random variables and continuous random variables. A discrete random variable, it doesn't have to be a whole number, but it has to take on specific, uh, a, a certain number of specific values. They have to be countable. There has to be an important distinction between incremental values. So some examples might include the number of new hires that a company makes in a year, number of murders in a city, or the number of customer complaints in a month. These are all countable values. So they're discrete random variables. Some continu continuous random variables can have an infinite range of possibilities, uh, an infinite number of possibilities within a range. Or if it's not exactly infinite, the distinction between incremental values is really not important. So some examples of that would be the height of an adult female. And you might say, well, you measure height in terms of inches and centimeters. Yes, but no one is exactly five foot six. What you, you've got is, is an entire range of possibilities, really an infinite number of, of heights for an adult female. She might be five foot 6.123874 inches that's, or, or what have you. Um, time to complete a task, same thing. You know, yes, you can measure it by seconds, but no one's going to actually finish in an exact number of seconds. It's going to be, um, there's really an infinite range of possibilities there. Or a company's yearly revenues. Now, this is where it gets a little bit trickier. We can definitely say you can measure a company's revenues down to cents, and then you kind of stop. I mean, you're really talking about cents as, as, as a clearly defined measure. That said, I, I come back to this point, which is the distinctions between incremental values are unimportant. When you're talking about a company, especially like a publicly traded company, cents really aren't going to matter. So it's not maybe exactly continuous, but for all intents and purposes, it is. Now, when we're talking about continuous when we're talking about random variables in general, we can assign probabilities to outcomes. And when we're talking about continuous random, with, with discrete random variables, it's fairly easy to assign probabilities. You know, we, we, and I'll show you an example of that in a moment. You have these distinct possible outcomes, and you just assign a probability based on knowledge of, of, of how likely events are to occur. When it's continuous random variables, you might use um, a range. So you assign a probability to a range. For example, when you're talking about the height of an adult female, you might say, probabilities of a woman being between five foot six and five foot seven, or five foot four and five foot five. You're assigning essentially a range to an inch. Um, time to complete a task, you might assign a range to uh, by minute or by seconds even, or, you know, a, a one second range. 
and a company's yearly revenue as well, you might actually go as high as like $1,000. You know, the probability of a company hitting a certain revenue mark uh, measured by in increments of 1,000. So now I want to actually take a look at how we might do a probability distribution with a discrete random variable. So I've got a potential probability distribu distribution defined here. This is a customer satisfaction survey. So the question is, how satisfied were you with your customer experience from one least to seven most? And let's say we've accumulated a bunch of responses from customers through this survey. And here's the scores, one through seven, and the number of people that responded with each of those scores. So to get a probability distribution, we need to show sort of the likelihood of each one of these potential outcomes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a sum of these values to say, OK, of all these responses, this shows that there were 200 total responses. And now I can start getting the probability of each one of those. So if I say, in my sample of 200, 16 people gave us a score of 1, unfortunately. So I'm going to say 16 divided by our total. And since I know I'm going to use that total again for each of these values, I'm going to, I'm going to um, make an absolute reference to that cell. And, and I'm going to drag that down. So this is our probability distribution based on that sample. We have an 8%, and, it, and we could extend this. Say if we extended this to all several thousand of our customers, based on this sample, this is kind of what we can expect. You know, we can expect about 8% of them to have had a terrible experience where they would give their customer satisfaction a 1. And we can expect uh, about 13% of them to say they had a fantastic experience and rate us a 7. Now I want to show, some, I want to define something else. There's, there's something that's going to come up a lot in probability and statistics it's called cumulative probability. And we're actually going to do a cumulative probability dis distribution here. Cumulative, cumulative probability is defined as everything at or below that value. So when you took the SAT or the GRE or the GMAT, you were given a percentage, percentile score. And that was actually a cumulative probability distribu distribution, meaning or it's not really a probability dis distribution, but you could use it that way to say, if you got an 86 percentile, good job, um, that would mean if you took, and, and, that, and, and that equated to a score of 670, I don't know, that's a complete guess. But if you got a 670 on, on one of the parts of your SAT, the, the verbal portion or on, the, on your GMAT, um, and that equated to a, um, what did I say, 86 percentile? That would mean that if you took any random person, the percentage, that, the chance that they would score at or below 670 would be 86 percent. So let's do that here. Cumulative probability of, at, at the lowest value is obviously just going to be that in itself. But beyond that, we're going to say the probability is 7 percent plus everything below that. And that is going to be the way we're going to define this all the way down. So it's probability of scoring that value and everything below that. So by the end this should actually take us to 100 percent. So obviously the highest score, um, getting at or below the highest score is going to be 100 percent. That just makes sense. So this is a cumulative probability distribution. Remember just cum cumulative probability, when you see that it means that value or below. So one last thing I wanted to show you with regards to probability distributions is a graph called a histogram. Histograms are really useful. They show you the distribution or the frequency of results So when you're talking about a random variable. So I might take these values. I've got my outcomes here, scores of 1 through 7, and the frequency that each of those outcomes came up. And a histogram is just a bar chart, very simple bar chart, that shows that frequency. So I'm just going to go choose my most standard bar chart here. Now it's quite a bit larger than I wanted it to be, so I'm going to shrink it down some. And this is my histogram. Let me spell it out for you here. It shows my outcomes along the horizontal axis 
and the frequency of those outcomes coming up along the vertical axis. So taken together, this is just a nice way of looking at a probability or um, a frequency distribution. It's another tool including probability distributions and cumulative probability distributions.